What a career, right? He is a founding member of one of the biggest K-Rock bands of all time. Our friend Mike Shinoda back in studio. Hey. Kevin Beach on K-Rock. Mike. All right. Well, it was good talking to you this okay, morning. Okay, thanks, thanks for stopping by. All right, bye. <laughs> We're out of time. Too much intro. Oh, my God. <laughs> I How love you been, watching faces of people when they hear uh. their music back. It was a grimace, a smile, and a <laughs> please make it end all at the same time. Such a long intro. <laughs> are you, uh, are you uh, wishing some of those songs were not in the, in the montage? No, I love, I love all the... I mean, like it's funny because we, we you know with every album you guys have lived through this with us like with mm -hmm. every album we take a lot of risks and sometimes they sound really different and you know this new album is one of them and and we've done that before where we play new music and we go and everyone can goes whoa that's so different from what i expected yeah so yeah you, you do a montage of them next to each other and they sound and sometimes it sounds a little crazy well it doesn't sound like the same band i mean that's I, the thing about it i promise you this like when we when you come to the show we we work really hard to create an experience where it you don't have that feeling of it being jarring like we work you know, one step closer into the same. Like right now, we were working, you know, all those songs that you just played and all of our other singles, and we're working them into the set together um, and the new stuff too. And it's, and it doesn't sound crazy when you put them in certain orders. Yes, you know? understood. Yeah. What is it about Linkin Park, do you think, that makes you guys so musically restless? I mean, it was our, that was our like, like mission statement from day one, you know? I mean, it, Hybrid Theory was actually the name of the band. So, that's been our philosophy, um, and I don't think it's a... I, I think it's built into the way we, like, listen to music. You know, I, I think... And the, by the way, the modern music listener is kind of the same. Like, we, we have different moods, and we, we want to hear different things at different times. Um, and I think it's really apparent on, on the new song and the new album, like, those all that stuff that we like and we listen to kind of just works its way into the, into the track. Well, a lot of listeners are already responding... And by the way, let me just say as an aside, when we uh, when we put on social media that you were coming in today with the new song, I don't think there's a band in the world today that has a bigger social media presence than you guys, at least in the rock world anyway. I mean, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people and so many fan clubs from so many countries all over the world just revved up and ready to go for today. I mean, you're obviously aware of that, but it must just be bizarre to see some of these countries that weigh in with every move you make. <laughs> well, it's we and we are we are like almost like perceived different ways when we're on different in different places so like in the US I can go to the grocery store and and I might I like like I went to the movies recently and the guy behind the counter is like Mike Shinoda like he's like oh cool man he, you know <laughs> here's a here's a voucher for like a dollar off your popcorn Sweet. and I get we get off the plane in like Russia and people are bum rushing the plane and like freaking out and screaming like the Beatles like it's it's a different you know it's different each place we go but um, and I actually prefer like living in LA and getting that the, the LA yeah a little more low key treatment. existence yeah, yeah of course of course um, and you guys know that but um, yeah with I mean we'll see what happens with the new music it's like you know this music is very like one thing that we did like our last album was a little more like for the core like it was a very heavy and loud album um, this one is kind of the opposite it's kind of a more um, accessible record and that wasn't necessarily like the whole intention but we we went into each song basically talking about like it, it, normally we would write a track first and we would write like y you know it'd be um beats and music and, and 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 guitar and piano and things like that and then we'd see what vocals that um track inspired and this album we actually did the opposite we like wa we walked in the room we started with lyrics and melody and when you start with lyrics it's a whole different thing because you walk in and you say what's on my mind today like you ever i mean you guys you guys do that because you you come in and you've got to talk about that stuff like oh mm -hmm. i just watched this or right. sure. this just happened to me at home like oh my god we had a leak and like everything my drywall's falling off like that's real oh stuff. i want to hear that song yeah. i want to hear the song yeah. about the drywall <laughs> yeah oh no the actually drywall song. this is a very that's what's really funny is that in in part like so so heavy is a song the one we you guys just played and we'll play again in a moment by the way if you're just joining us this is the voice of Mike Shinoda Lincoln Park we just played brand new music from them that's coming right up and you can be watching this interview on Facebook live okay go ahead okay so yeah so heavy is a song um that we wrote with like it's a kind of when it rains it pours like when you have one of those yeah. times when it's like okay I've got something big going like you know my my um somebody I know passed away or my, my, you know, my parents found out my parents are sick or something big like that. And that on its own would be super 
um, it's a lot to deal with. Mm -hmm. But then on top of it, like you're you're opening up Twitter and you're reading your news feed and you're kind of stressed out. I have kids, like some of us have, us have kids, like and then stuff's going on with the kids and like um, and then you open the cabinet and you're trying to get some cereal and you've got ants, like and they're in <laughs> all of your food and it's the stupidest little thing. It's really not a big deal, but that's the thing that sets you off. That's just like, the straw. That I've broke. had it. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. enough. Yes. Um, but that, like, like, that's one of the mornings we had. I remember we came into the studio to to write one day, and um, Chester came in and was like, "Hey, man, how you doing?" He's like, "Oh, I'm, I'm fine." And anybody, if you Chester says I'm fine, you know that something else is going on. It's like on. every chick that says she's fine. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, no. If you, he's like, "No, yeah, I'm fine." And then like 20 minutes later, we're still kind of getting into like, "What do you want to write about?" And he's like. Okay, you know what? I am not fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, the song is is called heavy, but it is certainly not heavy musically, and that's what a, I, you you know you've been warning us that this is going to sound different from almost any Linkin Park song we've ever heard before. I mean, would you go so far as to say it's a pop song? Well, I mean, I don't know. I, I different people have been reacting to it different ways. Like when I listen to it, I'd say like I tweeted. Um, I should say that I was seeing. Um, reactions from fans about the idea of what our first single could sound like. So in other words, like every time we say, hey, we have a new single, people start like, oh, well, it's going to be this and it's going to be that. Right. Well, I heard him say this and this is what it's going to sound like. And so, and I just got kind of, at one point I was just like, God, so many of these are so off base. And I actually, for me, I don't even know what to call the, like, the genre. And I, a, a friend of mine at one point had made this shirt that said genre is dead. And so I just tweeted that. I just tweeted genre mm -hmm. is dead. And like, it got so many favorites and retweets and stuff, and the fans kind of responded to me saying, "Like, yeah, 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 that's what it's about." Like, w me too. I I feel that way too. And and I I feel like this album is kind of like that. Like the place where we started, as you guys know, in the beginning of our career, we were mixing genres that people hadn't heard mixed a certain way. Mm -hmm. And now it's almost like the zeitgeist has come around to that in a way. And and it's done things like like other artists have done things with it that we never did and mm -hmm. that to me rather than being like to me that's super inspiring like yeah. i love that and and i know that we can take it a step further and hopefully we did with the with the album that we made there were not there have not been a lot of successful bands that combine rap and rock like yours do that have lasted as long as yours have and you're right it has spun off into other forms that other people are doing and mm. yeah i mean lincoln park played a big a big part in that that's for sure um heavy features a singer named kiara that i know you are a big fan of and i remember you tweeting about her at the end of the year as she had one of your favorite songs let me play just a little clip of the song that a lot of people i think it got you know, tens of millions of youtube views last uh, last year from kiara it's called gold Is that your introduction to Kiara? Yeah, I, I and as you know, I love I love finding new music. Mm -hmm. Like I'm always I, I I tend to listen to that more than I listen to stuff that is like kind of like more popular or whatever. Um, but I still listen to popular stuff too. But I, I love finding new stuff that I can tell somebody like, oh man, you, like I know I know you haven't heard this. Yeah, song. Check it's and like what finding was it? a nugget. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What it's, was it about her though that seemed so exceptional to you that you would then take the next step of reaching out to work together? Well, I, I could I could hear in that song like that one in particular. Um, I could tell that it was almost like a demo style like approach. Like there's something really. Um, almost like a sketch about it, like the way she approached it. And then they took that and they chopped it up and made a song out of it rather than like writing a song where you go, okay, here's the verse and here's the chorus and mm -hmm. here's my point. Like there was this stream of consciousness thing going on about it. That was so cool. And this guy named Felix produced the, the track and his, I thought his style is very, you know, minimalist and cool. Um, almost like, like the way, you know, Lord's music can be, but mm -hmm. at the same time, his is a little more hip hop. Based. Like it's a little more trap influence and stuff. She is, am I wrong about this, Mike? 18 years old? Uh, I think she's 20, 20. 21. -ish. Oh, she's, a, oh, all right. I'm a, yeah, a lot older. <laughs> she's but she's she, ready to retire. Is what I'm hearing. She's, yeah, I think my point enough. was though that she is young enough to have not known a world without Lincoln Park. Yeah, I was just wondering if that conversation ever happened, where she's like, "Oh, my parents were really into you," or anything like that. Oh, we had some really funny. Well, because she 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 hung out of the studio a few times, and and yeah, definitely like there were some times when we got on, like we were talking like musical references or just, "Oh, you remember this song? Remember that?" And I knew, like, as soon as I looked over here, I'm like, 
Oh yeah, you you didn't know any of this stuff. Like, <laughs> but she, what's but what's cool? What I love, we actually on this on this album, um, like on all the rest of our albums, we we wrote everything. We had a producer to kind of like come in and like keep like a like a high level like bird's eye view and make sure that like you know we were doing all the things that we we wanted to do with our record and this album is actually we kind of did the opposite where we took the brad and i produced it so we took the producer role and we still wrote we still led the writing but we actually brought in other people that we admire to to work on songs with it. and some of the folks that we worked with and they're not like names that you anybody would recognize like some of them um, they've written songs for all all over the place, like from mm -hmm. like Adele and Florence and the Machine and Lana Del Rey to like Bieber and like Selena Gomez. Like it's like it's way any all names. Over the place. We'd know. Um, well, okay, on this, <laughs> as far as the, that's the people they've written <laughs> for God. though. But like the people, like like Heavy, for example, we wrote with um, Justin Tranter and Julia Michaels. You probably know Julia. Julia's now she put out her first single. Um, but it was it was it was me and Brad and Chester and Justin and Julia and and they're like in in some cases like Julia I don't know how old she is but I know she's probably around Kiara's age and for me it's like super fun like I don't like when you're in there with them like I'm not seeing oh like that age doesn't like really come up unless you're talking about oh do you remember that Wu Tang song and they're like what's Wu Tang you know oh. like that's the <laughs> that's the only time when that shows up but other than that we're all just in the in the mix trying to make a good song and and I think that th they bring a freshness and like a like almost like a n sometimes a naivety that's like like exciting yeah and then we we bring this like more veteran like you know we've been doing this for longer so we have these ideas that come from working with you know Rick Rubin or something that came up when we worked with Jay-Z like it's a very um, the dynamic is really cool. Sure. All right, we got to pause right there. Mike Shinoda is our guest in studio. We just played the new Linkin Park song called Heavy. We're going to play it again after a very short break. I want uh, Diana to hang on, even though it's costing her a fortune. She's on the line from Romania, and she wants to ask her oh, question. She's been holding for twelve minutes. And uh, we're going to oh. let her on. And when we come back, we'll talk about um, we'll talk about uh, the new album, uh, what it's called, when it comes out, what the 2017 is looking like. It's so exciting to have Linkin Park, one of our all-time favorites, back on the radio on K-Rock. And we'll return more with Mike right after this on K-Rock. I got a bunch more questions about the album, but should we put uh, put poor Diana out of her misery? And oh let my her... gosh, For this girl. Love. It's like, I'm looking at the screen in front of me. It says calling from Romania. That's This has got to be like a $500 <laughs> phone call. And she's been on hold for like 16 minutes, so I do feel terrible. But we had, we had business. We had to take care of. Diana, thank you for calling. Thank you for holding. And how are you this morning, my dear? I'm holding on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Diane is the greatest ever. Uh, That's Diana, amazing. You know, help me out here. Let's bring Mike in on the loop because you and I spoke yesterday, uh, you know, via the the internet, and you told me yes. that you are what a Lincoln Park ambassador. Is that right? That is that right? Yeah, that is right. I'm the Lincoln Park ambassador in Romania, and I'm proud to represent the band here in this territory. And what what does that mean? What do you do as ambassador? So we're we're promoting every every release of the band. We um, I personally work here in the country as an artist manager in PR, and I will also take care of the song to get on the radio and uh, <laughs> video to hit the the TV stations and promote everyone, uh, spread the word about uh, everything Linkin Park releases. Wow! So Mike, you've got an army out there around the world, right? First of all, Diana, thank you so much because we here. we selected the. I mean, we selected. Um, I want to say it's around 40 ambassadors and the, and the reason it came up is because we've got this, you know, this worldwide fan base and, and, and in a lot of countries, you know, uh, a lot of the fans, English is not their first language. Mm -hmm. So we were having a little trouble sometimes, like if it was something that was really timely, it's like, oh, hey, a new song is coming out like tomorrow or this like uh, scavenger hunt is happening, like things are moving quickly and the fans who wanted to participate didn't speak English and they're oh, using yeah. Google Translate and it wasn't working right. And so they finally, um, at one point I was talking to Lorenzo who is... Uh, um, who works in our, our office and he's he actually started out as a fan club member and now he works for the band we hired him like years ago um, mm -hmm. and all the fans know him he's you know he's the best and, and we were like um, I was like man do you think there's a way we could y get the fans to act as like translators for us just to like help get over this 
hump. And he's right. like, yeah. And we came up this with the idea of ambassadors and we watched, they didn't even know this, but we were watching the fans for a long time. for like, like Checking like, their like, feeds, you know, everything. Just like watching, because you notice that certain people are very active and they're responsible wow. and they do the right thing. And then we said, okay, cool. So our first, uh, we, uh, we reached out to them and said, like Diana, we said, will you be you know, our ambassador for your area and you'll be just basically responsible for like disseminating Linga Park information and just trying to stick, like trying to translate it and represent it like true to the source. What an honor to a fan. Super fun. That's I mean, it's, it's, it's like a benefit, like for both ways, like they get the acknowledgement from the other fans, like, oh, this person's like, you know, we're going to look to them right. for, right. for, um, for information. And then you know, back and forth between us and them. Like, they're doing us a huge service. We totally appreciate it. Aww. Diana, what, what? how much is this call costing you today? Do you know? Uh, not so much because I have three minutes with America, so I'm good. Oh, <laughs> okay. Good All right. Might be the greatest ever. <laughs> now, do you, uh, do, did you have a question for Mike before we let you go? Uh, yes, I, I have a question. But first of all, I wanted to take advantage of this call and thank Mike for inspiring my career path since I was 11. As a child, I set the goal to work with Linkin Park, later became an artist manager and PR here in Romania. Wow. And now I feel myself coming closer to my dream, Mike, Aww. because with this ambassador position, uh, it's, it's getting closer. And I promise I won't stop until I accomplish my goal. That's so cool. <laughs> and how well spoken is she? Oh, my Seriously. Wonderful. All right. Uh, Thank last, you. Uh, la so last thing, quick question. You had something you wanted to ask Mike also, right? Yes, uh, I would like to know how does it feel for the band to work with the children of yesterday, us, the ambassadors, Kiara, uh, even Lorenzo and other um, headquarters, uh, LP headquarters employees are uh, fans from since childhood of the band. And I would like to know how does, does it feel for the band to, to have now um, us in, in their team? The, the, I think for us, the the... We're obviously, as I said, like very appreciative of the of the the help. It's it's. I mean, it's something that's neat for us. We we have fans in um, all over the place, and and it's hard for us, or even with the label as big as you know, for example, like Warner Brothers is. They can't sometimes um, communicate. They can't be the everywhere messages. all the time yeah. on the streets and mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So for us, I mean, like we're just. I feel like we're just lucky to have you guys and and the love that we get from from different places in the world and we're super appreciative and thank you so much for for you know helping us translate and spread the word thank you for calling you're Diana. welcome we love you're to welcome you, okay? i love the right. song and congratulations to everyone for in the band for for the song thank okay. you <laughs> bye diana bye bye guys is she uh, she is hot as she sounds, Mike. Oh, Bean. <laughs> I know that's not what we're but here for, but come on. She's just this beautiful, no, but I'm just grateful asking. fan, and you had, just, him, you had to sully it. Yeah, I'm just a little saying. Right, a little creepy. dirty. <sighs> hey, listen to this. We're Facebook living this through K Rock's Facebook right now. Uh, mm -hmm. Linkin Park fans around the world from Belgium, Argentina, Italy, Russia, Spain, India, Brazil, Indonesia, Mexico, Turkey, all tuning in. Uh, San Antonio. The, uh, and also from San Antonio, as a matter of fact. All right, let's talk. Uh, let's talk details about the album now that Heavy is out. That's the first step toward a new record. What can you tell us, Mike? Um, well, I'd say you know for for those, I mean, in general, the reason that we picked Heavy as the first single, um, one reason is because it's it's kind of core to the sound of the album. So um, this isn't like a polka album with one song that sounds like this. Like it's <laughs> it's this is how the album sounds. So there's that. Um, it's uh, the album is called One More Light, and um, it's the first time we've actually named an album after one of the songs. So oh. there is a song called One More Light on the album, um, and it comes out in May. Um, we expect, you know, I, we're gonna have surprises along the way. It's not like gonna be just like this song and then like a video and then like until the album. Like we're gonna have other stuff along the way. So just always keep in touch with Lincoln Park. Um, on you know Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever your favorite social media is. Is May nineteenth? Is that the date we're looking at? Yes, thank you. Yeah, May nineteenth. Well, then and the again, next question is though. Let me just get this in. People want to know a tour. Yeah, so we're um, we have tours already set up. Um, we have a lot of tour dates set up around the world. Uh, we've already got Latin America, uh, Europe, and Asia set up. Um, the 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 year is not full yet, so we will mm -hmm. be de announcing other things. Um, and in fact, we'll be playing some things that are not tour dates. We're really? going to be playing some little satellite things along the way. So just, like I said, like keep in touch with us on social media. 
Let's go back to the Best Buy parking lot where you guys played the K-Rock calendar signing mm. in the year 2000. Do you remember oh that, Mike? Oh, my God. Abs- uh, of course. That was the first time I think we ever met you in person, maybe. Pro- yeah, probably. And um, that was a famous gig in our minds because of how vehemently Chester was vomiting before you guys took the stage that oh, afternoon. Yeah. No. Oh, no. He, and he, he was so nervous. Yeah, he oh. was like, he was... Um, well, okay, so we had been on the road, like doing do, on a t- on a tour, and the tour had just wrapped up. We had, um, I think, we had just fired our sound guy and like got a new sound guy, and um, I, I, we were it was a mess. Like you were a things, mess. Things were growing so they was moving so fast and growing so fast. Like we had just heard ourselves on the radio. I all like five of us had grown up you know here listening mm-hmm. to radio here mm-hmm. and all of a sudden we're playing a radio show that is a local station and we're and we're meeting all the DJs and people are there and you guys had set up they had set up the show in a Best Buy parking lot and we expected it was going to be a few hundred people <laughs> and it was like 1500 people they were they were out to the end of the parking lot <gasps> over the gate and and out past the gate by like dozens I think they the were police may have closed it down if I remember correctly they I were think. warning I mean yeah no if they had gotten there they, I, as I recall, they were warning us and warning us, and there was nothing we could do, and we just played and got the hell out of there yeah. like, before they could shut it down. But even if they had, there was literally, there were literally so many people, and they were so avid that there was nowhere for them to go. Yeah, no, it was a, it was one of those crazy days that I'll always remember working here at K Rock, and I and I remember sitting there watching you guys going, these guys, they're never going to play a venue this small again. I mean, this is like they're they're so much better than this parking lot. <laughs> it, it was it was definitely like it it was one of those things that like for me, I, there were there were things were moving so fast that I didn't often get a chance to go, whoa, look where we are right now. Like yeah. this is you know it Take was definitely one of those moments where you look around and go. Oh, everything is changing. My well, like, every my life is like changing right and now. And you guys have had so many moments like that over the years where you probably are you can't even believe mm-hmm. what's yeah. happened. You oh, know, for you, sure. all you want to do is make music. That's your thing, and it's turned into this life. Well, you know? I always told people like w- uh, we we used to pay to make music. Like I would, all I was doing is spending money to just have the benefit, like to have the gear, to have the like opportunity to make a song. And so to be on the other side of it is like always we 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 always remember to like check ourselves and say this is a blessing we're lucky to do this and we did that more than ever on this record because you know just being at this point in our career like we could easily just kind of like play the old stuff and tour it and mm-hmm. just put it in like neutral like coast sure. coast for the rest of our our yeah. lives well, we love you and always have, and you've always been so good to K-Rock over the years, and I know that we'll see you again as uh, as this album unwinds. May 19th, you guys, new Lincoln Park is called One More Light. Mike Shinoda, thank you so much for coming Thanks, in, my man. brother. We'll talk to you soon. Cool, and thank you so much.